Mr. Morris, you say that you did not hold up the Wells Fargo station and you did not kill the agent. Yes, sir. But you won't tell me where you were. No, sir. Then will you tell me how I can believe you're innocent? I guess you can. Do you want to hang? No, I don't want to hang. I can't tell you where I was either. John Bean was appointed sheriff of Cochise County through the influence of the 10% ring for whom he performed many favors. This brought him into conflict with Marshal Wyatt Earp and many people of Tombstone. Wyatt was often tempted to kill Bean, but killing for any reason was against Wyatt's deeper principles. Bean knew this and as a result became one of Wyatt's most dangerous enemies. I cannot see your point. They murdered Hanby and rode off with a cash box in the mail sack. That's right, sir. But you won't organize a posse and go after them, and that's your sworn duty. Mr. Thacker, I'll go after those hoodlums, but not with a posse. Why not? You took a posse after the Samberdu gang. That was different. The Samberduers were running for the border through strange country. Now, these men know every rock, all the water holes in all directions. I'm just not going to ask amateurs to ride into an ambush. Well, if something isn't done fast, the main office will send a vice president down here. You see, they take it personal if one of their men is killed. Oh, yes, I know, and I honor them for that. I used to be an old Wells Fargo man myself. Now, look, you've got a good undercover man in J.P. Ayers. You trust him? Well, certainly. Well, then give him a chance to identify these small timers and pull the job. There's no sense in fighting the whole Clanton outfit. How long will that take? Well, sir, that depends on a lot of things. How long, Wyatt? Mr. Thacker, nobody can answer that exactly. It may take a week, it may just take a few days. Well, I can't wait. Wyatt, these robberies and killings have got to be stopped. Look, it would take 300 special agents and an act of Congress to break the Clintons, and we haven't got either one. Now, be reasonable. I've been reasonable too long. I'll handle this case my own way. Your own way? Hmm? We're the posse. Well, I won't take them out. You don't have to. I'm sure Sheriff Bean will be more cooperative. Good day, Marshal. Sheriff, I want a posse organized and sent after the Handy Killers right away. A posse? What about Marshal Herb? What did he say? The Marshal said no. So I came to you. You're the Sheriff. The truth is, sir, Earp isn't too popular. I doubt that he could raise another posse right now. Oh, he's probably waiting for the inside tip off to the guilty men. Well, I don't care what he's doing. The point is I want those men caught. I see. You want to send in a report your main office will approve. And naturally, they don't like unsolved crimes. Naturally. Do you? No, of course not. A posse's a very good idea, Mr. Thacker. Very good. But Herb should have started on the trail while it was hot. How big do you think that posse would have to be, Sheriff? I was getting to that. It would take 20 or 30 men. And the county can't afford to subsist horses and men on what could be a long chase. I'm afraid, sir... Wells Fargo doesn't ask the county to pay its bills. We're offering a reward. What kind? Even so, Mr. Ten thousand dollars for the arrest and conviction of Hanby's killers. Ten thousand? We never paid more. Now, if you're out for bounty money... No, no, I'd do well to break even. Naturally, anything left over would go to my deputies. Does that mean you'll go ahead? Yes. I'll raise the posse and lead them. I'll need an advance, however. Come over to the office. It's against company policy, but this is an emergency. I'll give you a thousand dollars. But, Sheriff, suppose you don't catch the killers. That trail is real cold by now. Don't worry, I'll find them. You get ready to ride, Kavanaugh. What do you say, Mr. Clanton? You keep the Wells Fargo stuff. We don't have to find that anyway. You turn the men who killed Hanby over to me, and we'll split the 10,000 50-50. Well, I'll tell you what I say. My boys never pulled that job. They got bigger things to do, and if they had, 
I wouldn't turn them in. Worth more than that right here. Then pick some sort of a troublemaker. It's an easy way to get rid of a man. And I don't care who it is. Well, I do. Never frame no man onto the gallows. But, Papa, $5,000. Hush up, Ike. You're a pretty poor excuse. I hate Wyatt Earp with a good, clean hatred, but I downright despise you. Papa, keep your temper. Come on, I see you to your horse. Don't turn your back on him, Ike. If uh, I find you a setup, does the 5,000 go for me? Sure. But I'll need witnesses, too. I can get them. But not a word to Papa. He'd kill me. Give me credit for a little sense. Find anything? No. Uh, not a tracks the trail gave up. Anything happened while I was gone? Yeah. You could have saved yourself the trip. Sheriff Ben's done already solved the case. The Hamby killing? Yes, sir. Brung in that young rancher, Will Morris. Says he done it. What does Morris say? That he didn't do it. What'd you expect? Maybe he's telling the truth. Uh, just wait till you talk to him, White. He ain't got no alibi. No, I'm afraid they're gonna hang him for it. I took a good look at that stage station. The three men in the robbery. Tracked the horses about five miles before the trail ran out. Dr. Goodfellow says that there are bullets from both the 45 and a rifle in the body. Sound more like the Clantons, don't we? Where's Morrison, sir? Yeah. We'll have a talk to him. You go get some rest. Ben Zitzy for a quick trial. Seeing that justice is done. There ain't a whole lot of time left, what? Oh, hello, Shotgun. Oh, how do, Miss Nelly? Wyatt, I've got to talk to you. It's quite late. It must be very important. It is. This is Virginia Rollins. Her father has that silver mine out north of town. Howdy, Miss Rollins. Won't you please sit down? Come sit down, Virginia. Thank you, Wyatt. I know your father. He's quite a fine man. What seems to be the trouble? It's not about him. Virginia tells me that Will Morris has been arrested for something that he didn't do. Well, he was arrested, but how do you know he's not guilty? Because he was with me when that man was held up and killed. He wouldn't tell Sheriff Bean. Why not? Because of my father. You see, Wyatt, sometimes Virginia's father can be pretty unreasonable. He wants her to marry a minor, and he doesn't even when want her... When he hears about this, I don't know what he'll do. He doesn't like Will. I don't care anymore. I can't let Will die. No, Virginia. Miss Rollins, is there anybody else who, uh, well, might have something against your young man? Oh, no. He works very hard on his ranch. Everyone else thinks he's wonderful, except Ike Clanton. What's Will got to do with the Clantons? Oh, it sounds silly, but Ike's jealous. He thinks I won't see him because of Will. So he hates Will. Threatened to shoot him once. Old man Clanton's done a lot of awful things, but I don't think he'd go for a frame-up. Maybe if I had a talk with him. No, he wouldn't tell you who the killers were. Maybe not, but I might get him to stop this frame-up. I'm not sure I want him to. Whatever you say, Wyatt. Miss Rollins, I want you to do me a favor. You go home and don't mention to anyone what you told me here. But he'll die. Now, don't worry. You can trust Wyatt. I don't think we should upset your father unless we need to. I promise you, Mr. Morris won't die. All right, Mr. Earp. Thank you. Thanks, Wyatt. Mr. Morris, you say that you did not rob the Wells Fargo station. 
You did not kill the agent? Yes, sir. But you won't tell me where you were? No, sir. Then how can I believe you're innocent? I guess you can't. Mr. Morris, do you realize that you're going to hang for this? That you're going to be tried and sentenced to hang for murder? I didn't think it was that bad. Do you want to hang? No, I don't want to hang. But I can't tell you where I was. I just can't. Why not? Are you trying to protect somebody else? I'm in love with this gal. I was out riding on the plateau with her last night. If her father finds out about it, there's no telling what he'll do. She'll never forgive me. Well, she must be a real dilly of a girl. If she lets you hang, you're a fool, not a gentleman. All right. Her, na her name is Virginia Rollins. You can ask her about it. I already have. She told me the whole story. Well, then I what? had to get it from you. Mr. Morris, it's quite obvious that you're being framed. But I have to find the killers. Now, I have an idea that if they think that you're going to be convicted of the murder, They'll get careless enough that I might be able to catch up with them. But I'll need time. Well, can I help? You can. You go on refusing to say where you were last night. Stay in jail a while longer. You mean just pretend I'm guilty? That's right. We may not have to use your alibi after all. Mr. Earp, I'll do anything to keep Virginia out of this. You are wrong. Sheriff Bean captured that hoodlum without losing a man. He used a posse? No, no posse. Just Kavanaugh. You're mistaken, Gibbs. I gave the sheriff an advance so he could hire the posse. You gave Bean money? thousand dollars. Looks like you uh, spent your money for nothing, Mr. Thacker. Now, you're on the wrong track, Wyatt. He's entitled to the reward as soon as the man's convicted. Now, if he didn't need the posse, well, that's sheer luck. And it's funny he didn't mention it to me. Yeah, it's very funny. Uh, how much more has he got coming? 9,000. The reward is 10. $10,000. Well, being a dream himself for that much. In order to get that 9,000, he's got to prove Mr. Morris guilty. That's right. Are you suggesting that he can't prove it? Oh, I'm not suggesting anything, Mr. Thacker. Look, why, uh, why don't we talk about this some other time? You know, if Bean has framed Morris for that reward money, this is our first chance to catch him at something serious. If we catch him. Yeah. Hey, look, there goes Ike Clanton into the birdcage. Yeah, and he's alone, too, ain't he? You don't suppose he's just going to meet a certain no-good sheriff in there, do you? Yeah, he could be. Being's too smart to let him come to the courthouse. But it's just coincidence if they happen to meet in the birdcage. Let's find out, huh? I want the rest of the money. The boys are fidgety. I already gave you the thousand I got. You'll get the rest when I do, after the trial. When's the trial? No date yet. You know how to handle the boys, Ike. Keep them quiet. I'll rush the trial as much as I can. Why rush it, Johnny? You'll hang soon enough. Quiet. Wells Fargo wants it settled. Oh, yeah, Wells Fargo. Say, whatever happened to that, uh... That posse you were going to hire. I tracked the killer myself. Didn't need a posse. What'd you do with the $1,000 Thacker gave you then? 
I've still got it. Part of the reward money, you know. Perfectly legal. What are you being so sociable about, Herb? I want you to tell me who killed Hamby. Sit down. You got nothing on me. Your father will have. If I tell him that you're helping B and put a frame on young Morris. I didn't frame anybody. Oh, I know all about it, Ike. I know why you picked Morris, and I know that you know who killed Hamby and where they are. And I want you to lead a posse there. What now, look. Mean? I arrested Morris on Ike Say So. If there's been a miscarriage of justice, it's my duty to straighten things out. Well, he says that just like a real sheriff, don't he? Don't he? I ain't a squealer. But I am. And I tell your father. You can't do that, Papa. Kill me. Better chance than I'd give you. Now look, Sheriff Bean. We form a small posse with Mr. Thacker. Since you got some of the money, why don't you just come along and make the arrest? Wyatt, I'm on good terms with the Clantons. It helps me when I collect taxes. You don't need my help to arrest those Clanton men. The old man might get sore. Oh, no, John. You don't weasel out. Shut up! Shall we go, gentlemen? will come in from the back. Mr. Thacker, you and your man take the sides. We'll come in from the front. Let's go. I better stay here and watch the horses. Roscoe will watch the horses. Come on. Laws outside. Hey. Well, we can't make a fight here. Come on, let's make a run for the brush. Wait, the cash box and mail that. Run off, Wyatt. Let him. We got what we came for. Mr. Clan! Mr. Clan! Well, what's the trouble, Dongo? Come on, spit it out. Well, B and double crossed you. He arrested Jack and Homer for the hand be killing. B and done that? That's right. He led Wyatt Earp and the Wells Fargo agent right straight to the hideout, and they killed Summers. Get the boys. We can do some killing, too. Marshal Earp? Yes, sir. Remove the prisoners. If the court please. Yes, Sheriff. I think the law provides that I have custody of these men. The court does not consider you a proper custodian. Mr. Earp, take them away. Yes, sir. One moment, Sheriff. The court orders you to release Will Morris forthwith. Yes, sir, right away. Hold on. I'm not finished. You will also return the $1,000 that you accepted from Wells Fargo. You're not entitled to it. But... Court is adjourned. I, uh, I guess I owe you an apology. We all make mistakes. An innocent man could have been convicted with Wells Fargo paying 10,000 to get it done. I, I, I haven't any excuse for being so hasty, Wyatt, except the complete lawlessness of this town. Well, I uh, understand your position, Mr. Thacker. You have a lot of pressure from the main office. 
Your mistake was in tempting an unscrupulous man with your reward. Well, that's another thing. Why haven't you arrested Bean? Because I can't prove that he framed Morris. Don't you think I'd like to nail him? Oh, calm down. I, I was just asking Wyatt. I, I got the thousand back, the mail sack, the cash box, and the men are in jail. I, I can't complain. What are you doing here? They're in town. Old man Clanton and his top guns. So what's so unusual about that? They sent for me to come to the birdcage. They mean to kill me. Well, now, why shouldn't they, from their point of view? You tricked me into leading that posse and arresting Clanton's men, Wyatt. You can't let him kill me. Well, Sheriff, I see you got the message. Clanton's going to gun him, Wyatt. And I say good riddance. He brung it on himself. Where's Ike Clanton? Cosmopolitan Hotel. He's afraid to go home, and I don't blame him. What are you gonna do, Wyatt? Mr. Gibbs, you've gone over to the Cosmopolitan Hotel and see that Ike doesn't leave that room. You get in a cell. A cell? You ask him my help or not? Get in a cell. The Clantons won't look for you there. All right. I'll wait there. Where are you going, what? Don't you worry about that. You just keep Ike in that room. He deserves to be killed. I'd have shot him myself, but he won't go for a gun. Bean's got to die, ain't he, White? We all have to die sometime, Mr. Gibbs. No. You were tempted to let them gun Bean. Yes, I was. But how can you save him? Well, I have to try. Can't let Clinton shoot at us, Sheriff. Even to get rid of Bean. Bean ain't in the courthouse, or in his hotel, or in any saloon. You reckon he's spooked? He ain't got no place to run to, boss. Where could he go? Well, get your guns. We'll find him. Let's go. Uh oh Hold on a minute. <clears throat> Evening, Luke. Even Mr. Clinton. Me and the boys are in town to do you a big favor, sonny. <laughs> Can't tell you what it is just yet. Ike is mighty sick, Mr. Clanton. Sick? What's wrong with him? Dr. Goodfellow doesn't know. But Ike would like to see you. Well, where's he at? Cosmopolitan Hotel. Well, I'll have to go. You ought to just sit a while. I won't be long. <laughs> After I found out he tried to frame Will Morris for half the reward money, I threatened to tell you. So he agreed to turn in Hanby's killers. You can't blame Bean for that. I forced Bean to go along. This true, I... Tell this around. No. Only reason I told you is so you wouldn't kill Bean. <laughs> You're the Lord's own fooler. Bean hates you. He'd gun you if he had the sand. Get on your feet. Herb said you were sick. You're gonna be. Come on. If you wasn't a Johnny Law, Sonny, I'd thank you real kindly. the house. I'm Dodie Jones in Tucson. All right, you've been here before. Go on in. You must have heard what he did to me in Tombstone. Knocked most of my teeth out. Cost me six weeks getting him fixed. Too bad. However, this is more than a personal matter. 
News of conditions in Tombstone has reached Washington. Boil it down to plain language, will you, Doty? In plain language, it means that there'll be a new governor. Carpetbaggers running things. Unless we get rid of Earp. Yankees bossing us around? Speeches in the Senate already. They're calling us hooligans. Well, now, that's bad talk. I don't like it. Something has got to be done. You've got to get rid of Earp. Killed? Well... There's no other solution, Mr. Clanton. Earp has stirred up the Wells Fargo Safety Committee and Clum's paper. You've got to get rid of him. Shut up. I'm studying this. Tombstone. Oh, that's no good. With all your men? I wouldn't take my boys into town for this. All them tombstoners fighting behind adobe walls. I hadn't thought of them. Well, Earp was honest, and he's brave. Can't buy him, he can't scare him. Yeah, it's too bad. He'd have to be killed, all right. How? When? That's my business. It ain't a job I relish, exactly. I won't talk no more about it. Wyatt Earp stayed alive in Wichita, Dodge City, and Tombstone because he was more intelligent than the gunslingers, outlaws, and hoodlums who hated him. But when Marshall Earp became an intolerable menace to the Clantons and the 10% ring in Tucson, the time had finally come to kill him. Wyatt, this comes straight from our undercover man at Charleston. They heard a drunk talking? That's right. Old man Clanton's rounding up all his top guns. There's a power at his ranch tonight. Could be just a rustling raid. No, to get you. Clanton has too much sense to ride in here for a turkey shoot. We can raise lots of guns, Mr. Stacker. Well, if we have time. We need all the men Wells Fargo can send. This could be the showdown, Wyatt. Mr. Thacker, I string along with Doc. Old man Clanton isn't going to bring his men into Tombstone. But he's promised the Tucson crowd he'll kill you. Doc. At your service, Deacon. You circulate among your hoodlum friends, see if you can find one of them that'll tell us what this is all about. Mr. Gibbs. Yes, sir. Take a tour of the saloon, see if you can find any Clanton men in town. All right, sir. Go ahead and blow off steam, Mr. Thacker. Do you good. Wyatt, I tell you, the Clanton crowd is getting ready to gun you down, and you smile. You think this is a wild rumor? No, sir, I don't. Then let's get a posse. You need help. Clanton isn't going to come charging up Allen Street. He'll think up something a lot slicker than that. Ambush. Maybe. I'm still going to ask Wells Fargo for as many special men as they can send. Uh, it's your company, sir. Wyatt! I'm trying to save your life. Thank you, sir. Close the door, Gibbs, and lock it. I don't know nothing, Doc. You don't, huh? And how come Gibbs found you hanging outside the telegraph office? Huh? Oh, I was expecting a message. You, uh, who'd waste money wiring you? Hold that cannon on him, Gibbs. You touch me and old man Clanton will fix you. <laughs> you can't bluff me, Doc. <laughs> Rowdy used to be a telegrapher. Till he joined up with the sand badoos tapping wires for them. Why don't you just kid his throat, Doc? That won't be necessary. Just a little nerve surgery. I'm going to fix it so he'll never use his hands again. Put your arm on the table. You don't dash cut me, Doc. It's against the law. Put your arm on the table, quick. Doc ain't fooling, mister. Okay. Hold that knife, Gibbs. <laughs> You'll sever the elbow tendons, but a nerve section. No, 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 Doc, don't, don't, please don't. I'll tell you. Well, start talking then. Well, old man Clanton is going to heist the stage, and, and then he's going to bushwhack Wyatt Earp when he comes riding in. What stage? Well, I don't know, Doc, so help me. Give me that knife, Gibbs. <laughs> he fainted, and I only pinched him a little. You reckon he was telling the truth? Well, I reckon he's too scared to lie. You know, Gibbs, a lot of my hoodlum acquaintances think that I'm a surgeon as well as being a dentist. 
It's a wonder he didn't die of fright. We'd better get out of here. Not yet. When Clanton sets up a bushwhack like this, it calls for some accurate killing. I'm sending for Morgan Earp and some good guns. Doc, them Clanton's is long past due. You go on with your patrol. We'll break the news to Wyatt after I send the telegrams. Right. shoot you. Come on in. How are you, Doc? I'm fine. Fine. You send this telegram? If I want Wyatt to live, I'll hurry to Tombstone? Yep. Virgil told me not to pay any attention to it. He said you must have been drinking. Morgan, you can get 10 to 1 and Wyatt will be buried in Boot Hill Cemetery by sundown tomorrow. You mean it? Who's after him? The whole Clanton outfit. Ringo, Brocious, the McLowry, Spence, Stillwell. The finest collection of six-gun talent ever assembled. Wyatt want to fight him alone? No, he just doesn't believe it. The Wells Fargo people have told him. I've told him. Maybe he'll believe you. I don't know. I'm just a little brother. Yes. Have you sent for help? I certainly have. Morgan, this is the showdown. Either you convince Wyatt he's going to be killed, or he will be killed. Oh, no. Hi, big brother. You're uh, kind of traveling fast company, aren't you? I can shoot. Doc send for you? You can tell him, Morgan. He says there's bad trouble here, Wyatt. Well, now, Dr. Uh, Holiday just could be wrong, you know. <laughs> anyway, welcome to Tombstones. Good to see you. I'll get washed up and we'll grab a bite of supper. Huh? Doc doesn't spread false alarms. How's the trip? Pretty fair? We won't wear our guns, because Wyatt might get sore about it. This is the place we meet Doc Hunter. Feed him and water him. We're waiting for Doc Holliday. Where are you supposed to be dry gulched? Mm -hmm. Skelton Canyon, Doc says. Wells Fargo stage is to be robbed there. Their uh, agent wants to call out the cavalry. What's so funny about that? Uh, I look awful funny, wouldn't I? Take a men into Skelton Canyon, nothing happened. What if it does? I still look awful funny. Marshal riding into an ambush. Look, if Clanton is after you, what are you gonna do? Wait for the bullet. Take your boys back up there in the brush. 
Now, no fires, no moving around to visit here. Papa says Herb can't get here till noon. Why don't we shoot him? Papa says do it smart. All this is only bait. He wants Herb and his posse off of them horses and questioning these fellas before we move in. Yeah, like setting ducks on a pond, huh? Yeah. It's about time. You boys tote that money box and that mail pouch upside of the hill. We'll whack it up while we're waiting. Come on, let's go. Make the time pass quicker. What? The Skeleton Canyon stage is now two hours late at Station 5. What are we waiting for? We should be on our way to the canyon. I don't think we ought to go out there. What? Old man Clanton won't be taking part in that robbery. Correct. He'll plan it, but he won't be there. Nobody else can control the top guns. Well, that's smart thinking, Why? They ain't on his payroll. Well, I think that they'll wait maybe till 1 o'clock, and they'll decide that I've been tipped off, and the ambush is solid. I suppose they'll just go home, eh? Now, sir, I think they'll probably go to Charleston or Galeyville and spend a little of that loot they took from the holdup. Well, now, uh, what do you propose? I think we should take all hands out to the Clanton Ranch. Old man Clanton's home place? We can grab them as they straggle back. Well, that's nonsense, Wyatt. We'd, we'd be boxed in the center of Clanton's domain. John, I just don't like the way you think. Oh, you don't, eh? No, I like Wyatt's idea. It shows a tremendous understanding of the hoodle of mind. It's a bold strategy. <laughs> it's bold, all right, that's for sure. But if it works, old man Clanton will be spitting ten-penny nails. I'll go along with you, Wyatt. And so will my friends. The whole plan amuses me. We can't back you. It's too dangerous. It's not as dangerous as fighting bushwhackers. Yeah, at least we'd be fighting from behind walls. Yeah. The walls of Clanton's own house. <laughs> no. No, the risk is prohibitive. All right, Mr. Thacker. I can't urge you. It is risky. Morgan, you make sure you get a good horse. I think we ought to get out there before 1 o'clock. Mr. Gibbs, make sure that everybody has a Winchester and a handgun. Now we get some extra bandoliers from Spangenberg's gun store. Right. Well, Wyatt, uh, if you're that determined, you, uh, well, you better count Wells Fargo in. Thank you, Mr. Thacker. The Clantons have needed a dose of their own medicine for a long while. Come on, Doc. Yes, sir, it's a dandy. Now, just take a look at it out here, Mr. Clanton, where you can see it in the sunlight. Here, I'll take your hat. By Joe, this is a dandy, all right. Ooh, Emma. Emma ought to like this one. You've been fussing at me all year to get myself a new hat. Is that so? Well, it's the finest we have in the store, Mr. Clanton. The very finest. <laughs> Looks like Marshall Earp's taking a posse somewhere. They're just wasting tax money again. Oh, not this time, Mr. Clanton. You see, there was a stage hold up in Skelton Canyon this morning. Wells Fargo. Oh, you don't see. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> but Marshal Earp will catch him all right. <laughs> uh, yes, sir, I, I just can't get over it. That's the best looking hat I ever did see. Looks just fine, Mr. Clanton. Just fine. Well, I'll take it. How much? See, that's funny. They're going the wrong way. Well, that sure in tarnation ain't the road to Skelton Canyon. Hmm. Must be something bigger going on, huh? Something bigger? You're a blasted fool, Sidney. That herb's an even bigger one. Any sign of uh, Earp yet? It's almost 2 o'clock. Your old man was wrong. Earp ain't coming. You reckon he was tipped? A good John Law can smell a bushwhacking. He's good. I'm leaving. Girlie, Papa's gonna be sore. Let him be sore. 
Look, we robbed Wells Fargo and the United States Mail. He's got to bring a posse. He was tipped. Anyway, we missed. Papa's right-hand man, Ike. You know, I don't think much of bushwhacking anyhow. Why didn't you offer the gun, Herb? You know why. He wears a U.S. star. You're scared, Herb. You disobeying Papa's orders, Curly? I'll do anything he says it's sensible. It ain't sensible waiting out here in the brush forever. I'm going to Gailyville. Any of you boys want to keep me company? Oh, no. Any of you just try it. I'll go with you, Curly. Looks like right by Herb. Gibbs, you and I will move in first. Doc, you and Mr. Thacker, come in with half the men on a three-shot signal. Morgan? Brother? You wait here five minutes, make sure that nobody comes in on the North Trail. Then you take the rest of the men and move in and join us. Wyatt, we could be outnumbered awfully fast. You still asking us not to shoot to kill? No. My plan doesn't work out and we're jumped by too many Clantons. Every man will have to decide for himself what has to be done. Fair enough. Let's go. Right now, we'll find out. Watch it. It's all clear inside. Take them on in hog time. I'll signal the others. March in. All right, now, Mr. Thacker, you and your men take the bunkhouse, Doc. You and your gunfighters, you hold the main barn over here. I think you can make it fairly tight with hay bales. Right. The rest of us will try to hold the main house. That'll give us three sides to a square, and I want all the horses out of sight. I'm hoping that the old man will come in with a small party. Don't think he'll surrender, huh? No, he'll fight. Now, my big hope is that the rest of the outfit will straggle in. We'll take them group by group. Too many windows for a fight, Wyatt. Uh, we can gun them down in five minutes. Well, it may not be that easy, Morg. If it gets too hot, there's a bell here over by the cook shack. I'll shoot at that. That'll let you know that we're retreating to the bunkhouse over here. Last stand at the Alamo. Don't even count on seeing us. I can't run, and Wyatt won't. Dust cloud from the north. You better take your station. Let's go. <laughs> Lock that door. You meant to take those windows, Morgan? Whoa. There ain't no loyalty in nobody anymore. I ought to fire them boys and kill that brooches. Now, Papa, Earp wasn't gonna show. You said so yourself. That ain't the point. I decide when to quit an ambush party, not Curly Brocious. They just went to Gailyville for some fun. If they get home, they'll have some fun. Now, Papa, you can't blame them too much. They just... I blame them plenty. And I'll show them big heads who's running this outfit. Get for home! Yeah! Come on, it! Yeah. Here they 
come. Bill, mate, feed and water the horses. Boys, I want you to know, I appreciate loyalty. I'm going to find every man would run off $100 and whack it up amongst you men. Good, Papa. Hey, where are them guards? Mr. Clinton, you and your men are under arrest. Er, by Joe, steps out of my own house and says I'm under arrest. Look out. Take cover, boys. I gotta stop this fight right now. Stop shooting, boys! You hear me? Stop shooting! Herp! Call off your posse! No more shooting! Hold your fire! We didn't get the rest of them. Why? Who isn't here? Mm, McLaurys, Curly Brocious, Johnny Ringo, a few others. All we have are these. The old man, Ike and Finn. Well, at least we got them. Mr. Clanton, I'm going to charge you with that holdup at Skeleton Canyon. Skeleton Canyon. Charge away, Earp. You can't prove nothing. But as long as there's a Clanton, you remember this day, shooting at me from my own house? What's the matter, Clanton? Don't you like being bushwhacked? Well, now, I don't think he hates being bushwhacked as much as being plain outfigured, Doc. He'll get used to it, eh, boys? <laughs> Judge put up quite a struggle. Well, Spicer. Big man. And you would be John Ringo. I thought you had better sense. Why didn't you turn Charlie Parks loose like I ordered you? A circuit judge doesn't take orders from a hoodlum. <laughs> Parks ain't guilty. That is for a judge and jury to decide. Well, you won't be the judge. I'll get a rope, Johnny. Hold it, yes, hold it, man. hold it. Spicer can still change his mind. Sit down and think it over. Judge Wells Spicer of Tombstone was generally regarded as the most fearless judge in Arizona territory. He backed Marshal Earp and the forces of law and order with complete disregard of his own safety. Although Hoodlum seldom dared to threaten a judge, the Clanton killer known as Johnny Ringo was capable of anything. And when Spicer clashed with Ringo in the Charlie Parks trouble, Wyatt had good reason to fear the worst. Oh! Hold it! Hold it! The 
forgot to fill my canteen. Yeah. Ain't hard to worth a stop, Mr. Granby. <laughs> but seeing it's you, I'll do it. Yeah. Are you heading for the mine? Nope. The stamp mill in Charleston. Oh. Don't neither of you move or make a sound. Keep them covered. All right, Charlie, let's go. Payroll. Hey, Where's Marshall Earth? Well, he's checking the saloons at this time of night. Oh, Lord. Did you hear one of them say Charlie? Yeah. I think I know Charlie. I gotta tell Mr. Earth. Are you certain it was Charlie Pox of the Clanton outfit? I swear it, Marshal. How about you, Mr. Granby? Well, he fit the description of Parks, but I don't know Parks. Both of these men wore masks. Uh, I can take an oath it was Parks. Uh, Mr. Granby, you say you lost $4,500? Yep, in tens and twenties. Well, does your office have a number list on these bills? Well, we list about one in ten. Uh, help a lot. Now, you tell me exactly what happened. Well, well, I was on my water well, wagon, and he wanted me to fill his canteen. And I got up, and I went around back of the wagon in order to fill the canteen. And a guy stepped out there with a gun that long right in my back. Scared me to death. You've got to quit hanging around, Charlie. I like several of Clanton's men. Getting particular about one is trouble. Bad trouble. I thought you meant it. About, uh, going to Denver? Oh, how can I do that? I'm in business with old man Clanton. <laughs> Some business. Hiding robbery loot. Fencing jewelry and Mexican gold. It pays, Charlie. You want to wind up in jail? Or dead? Act your age. I can't run out and you know it. I'll marry you. Huh. John Ringo is my first cousin. You say the word? John will talk to old man Clanton. Ask him to let you out. Ringo wouldn't let you marry me. Quick, in the other room. Just a moment. Who is it? Your laundry, Miss Alma. Everything went fine. It's all right, Charlie. More loot? Don't act so shocked. You're not so pure. You help Ringo and Clanton steal cattle. Here, the 200 I owe you. I don't care about that. Take it. Now get out. But Alma, honey. Don't honey me. I ain't sweet. Good night, Mr. Parks. Get in and sit down. That's him. That's him. That's Charlie Parks. You better start talking, mister. I got nothing to say. Mr. Parks, you were carrying four $20 bills. They were taken from the robbery tonight. Where'd you get them? They blew down the street, and I picked him up. Johnny Ringo's my first cousin. He won't like this. Put him in there for the night, Mr. Gibbs. Come on, bud. Can you imagine that? $20 bills blowing down the street in Tombstone, and me up on a war wagon. Now, Ringo, got you hold of your 
your temper. I'll get young Parks out and hire him a lawyer. Getting mad at Judge Spicer, that don't make sense. Charlie Parks wasn't in on that heist. Then Spicer will turn him loose. I ain't beholden to no judge. A man has to take up for his kinfolk. And I'm making sure Charlie don't get railroaded. I'm tired of nursing you, Johnny. You get in trouble this time, you get yourself out. Uh, some of my hoodlum friends think you have the wrong man on that payroll heist. Pikes was carrying some of the stolen money. Granted. And Spouter will testify it was Parks. But if I know Charlie Parks, he wouldn't do anything without cousin John Ringo. Oh. And what about that girl he's been seeing? Well, if you're referring to Miss Alma Ross, the sweetheart of the Clantons, <laughs> let me tell you why. A drone like Charlie wouldn't aspire to the Queen Bee. And if he did, Ringo would stop him. You think uh, Ringo would try to bust him out? Bound to, Wyatt, bound to. Well, you better stay awake until Judge Spicer gets here. I may need you. All right. Jed Spicer? That's right. Johnny Ringo will give me a message to give you. He says to turn Charlie Parks loose. Who's Charlie Parks? Turn him loose. That's all he said. Where does Ringo think he's going to get threatening me? Sir, when Ringo loses his temper, he doesn't think. Hmm. Well, bring in this Charlie Parks, huh? Yes, sir. Mr. Parks, this is only a preliminary hearing. Now, you can plead guilty or not guilty or refuse to say anything at all. I'm not saying nothing. Very well. The court will set bail in the sum of $5,000. Do you have it? Marshaller, return the prisoner to jail. Yes, sir. This court is adjourned. Hello. I only heard enough evidence to justify holding parks. The robbery was at night, and the robbers were masked. Well, I'm not sure that he was in on the job. Spotter could have been mistaken because of the masks. Well, then why would Ringo threaten me? Sir, Ringo once killed a man because he ordered beer when he ordered whiskey. He uh, isn't exactly logical. Hmm. Well, I have a case to hear in Charleston. I'll be back tomorrow. I wish you'd postpone it. Why, because of Ringo? <laughs> Nonsense. I've been threatened before. Sir, then let me go along. Hmm? No, you stay here work on the parks matter. I can take care of myself. Yes, sir. But thanks, Wyatt. Well, there isn't any sense in arguing with Judge Spicer. We'll just have to trail him. Yeah. Mr. Gibbs. You ready? Yep. He doesn't even ask where. We might have some shooting with Johnny Ringo. It's me. Come on. Marshal Earp, my name is Ross, Alma Ross. Well, is it uh, anything important, ma'am? We're in kind of a hurry. I'd like to see Charlie Parks. Well, you can see him in about three hours. Marshal Earp, I know something about the law. Any prisoner has the right to have a visitor. Don't rile him, Miss Alma. He's quite impervious to your charm or your scorn. If you uh, come back later, you can see him then. Order! Court's in session. Well, so now you're going to try me. Just like you tried Charlie Parks. 
I told you I didn't try him. It was only a preliminary hearing. Well, I'll do the same thing, Judge. I'll give you a preliminary hearing. <laughs> Order! Nothing funny about this. Is there, Judge? No, there isn't. Untie him so he can raise his right hand and swear to tell the truth. I think you know I'll tell the truth. All right. Now, what evidence you got against my cousin, Charlie? Well, they grabbed him here. Headed for Apache Rock. Come on. As I said, the evidence against Mr. Parks thus far is circumstantial. What does that mean? When Parks was arrested, he had four bills from the stolen payroll on him. He refused to explain them. Yeah, but who saw Charlie in that heist? There is an eyewitness, Ringo. But the bandits wore masks, and I'm not convinced he's right. Well, then you're holding Charlie just because of the money. Not altogether. Your message ordering me to turn him loose was conclusive. Huh? I mean that any orders coming from a hoodlum like you shows that something's rotten. If Parks is not guilty, why should you risk a charge of abduction and contempt of court? He's talked too long, Johnny. Let's hang him and get away from here. Yeah. Order! I want to say something to big man Spicer. You called me a hoodlum. Well, I wouldn't treat a dog the way you've acted about Charlie. You deny he was in that holdup? I sure do. Charlie don't do nothing without my say-so. Yeah, that's right. Order! Now, this court is going to ask you one last question, Judge. You going to turn Charlie loose? Not until he's had his trial. I'll crease Ringo's skull, and we'll jump him. All right. I reckon I better pass sentence. Formal-like. Hold it! Put down your guns. Unbuckle them. Wake up, Ringo. Wake up. Come on, wake up. Doc, give me a hand. We'll walk them around. You take care of them. Come on. Stand on your feet. I'm going to gun Ringo for this. Oh, I claim priority. You'll do nothing of the sort. But he tried to kill you, sir. This man is guilty of abduction and contempt of court. But he can't be gunned for that. And what I say applies to you, Dr. Holliday. Holliday? It is, Doc. I'll shoot it out with any one of you. Sit down. He's a sweet character, ain't he? He says Parks is innocent, and he seems sincere in his reasoning. Sincere? Ringo? Judges, we save you from getting shot, and all you keep thinking about is justice for Charlie Parks. Ringo will get away with this attempt, sir. He'll demand a change of venue from your court. You'll have to grant it. That's right. One of them Clanton judges will acquit him for sure. That isn't the point. What is the point? Wyatt has a crime of armed robbery to solve. Now, if Parks goes to court, he could be convicted just because he's a hoodlum. Now, do you want that? No, sir. Well, then act like it. And you, Dr. Holliday, must I remind you that you once stood trial on a framed-up charge? I stand reproved, Your Honor. Very well. Now, take these men to jail. There's time yet to work on the robbery. Yes, sir. May I ask where you're going? To Charleston. I have to hear a case there, remember? I'm more than an hour late now. Why, well, I think maybe we better solve that payroll heist another way. You know, I think you're right. Come on. You've got a nerve. You going someplace, Miss Alma? Get out of here. I told you she'd try this, Wyatt. Miss Elmer, you're under arrest. That's a laugh. Doc, you take her over there and sit her down. Mr. Gibson and I will turn this place inside out. My pleasure. Shotgun, take that room.
Tearing down the hotel, Wyatt? No. We have enough evidence now. What? There's a walled up closet in there. Just looky here. And she had this in a hollered out bedpost. Just take a look. From Mexico, no doubt. All those jewels and you two? It's quite a treasure, Wyatt. Funny man. Miss Elma, did you plant those payroll banknotes on Charlie? What do you take me for? I owed Charlie 200 and I paid him. How did I know the mine kept the numbers? I don't suppose you'd care to tell us who pulled the robbery. You haven't proved anything. A young lady living in the middle of all these here stolen goods, worth thousands. I'll explain it all in court, Mr. John Law. Now, oh, this is a story I simply must hear. Come on. I warned Ringo Plain to his face. Kidnapping a judge, threatening to hang him. Why, I never heard of such tomfoolery. All right. What do we do about it? That part's easy. We have him changed to one of our own judges. It's the girl I'm worried about. You mean Alma? Herb caught her red-handed. All kinds of stuff in her room. Well, a pretty girl collects presents. <laughs> Not robbery loot, Mr. Clanton. You just defend her, Baxter. That's what you paid for. You gonna let Spicer try her? He's a man, ain't he? You know Alma. Well, all right. No slip-ups now. I need that gal. Best hand in the outfit comes to selling goods. You know what? I was just trying to imagine old man Clanton's face. He must be apoplectic by now. Ah, it's no use, Doc. I got three people in jail, and I still haven't found the men that held up Granby. That's quite true, Deacon. You said that Ringo wouldn't like it if uh, Charlie was sweet on Miss Alma. Ringo would not allow it. Why not? He is a bully and a tyrant. Even Ringo can't be a king without a kingdom. Charlie is his kingdom. Well, Ringo's got plenty of followers. They're not all cowards. Well, thanks, Doc. I guess it's worth a try. What is? Well, it's just a, just a hunch. I'll let you know if it works out. What's wrong, Charlie? Alma cleared you. You're free. I made my bail. Cheer up. I can't. I'm worried about Alma. Ah, oh, the old man will get her off. He'd better. I want to marry her. No. <sighs> but Cousin John, I love her. I said no. Get on your horse. Now, now, you must be brave and tell the truth. It was horrible. I thought the silver things were presents. We were going to be married and have our own house and... <laughs> Mr. Baxter. Your Honor. The defendant asserts that she was tricked by a criminal. The court would like to know his name. Oh, no. Please, no. He'd kill me. Miss Ross, the court must warn you that fear of your paramour in no way lessens your responsibility before the law. Do you expect me to risk my life? I'm sure the court appreciates what terror this little lady has lived under. <laughs> If 
If the court please, the defense rests. Very well. This court is adjourned till 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. What's this, Ringo? Them two pulled the robbery, passed the stuff to Alma. She gets rid of it. Who for? Never mind that. I gave them knockout drops. They won't know how they got here. Fair enough. You tell Judge Spicer he's getting off lucky. He ought to be more careful. Your Honor, we intend to prove the opportunity. Order! Order! Marshaller, what's the meaning of this? Your Honor, these men have confessed to the mine payroll robbery. And they also wish to testify against Miss Alma. Ringo did this, I know it. Don't you dare testify against me. You hear? Don't you dare! Order! Order in the court! Order! Order in this court! Grant and Mr. Haley, you are sentenced to five years in prison for armed robbery. Miss Ross, you will serve 18 months in jail at Tucson. <laughs> Marshal, remove the prisoners. Run out this way. Good work, Mr. Earp. Oh, uh, Mr. Earp. Call John Ringo to the bench. Ringo? Come on up here. You want me to come and get you? Mr. Ringo, you kidnapped and attempted to intimidate a judge of the territory of Arizona. You will be charged and tried for your crime in a higher court at Prescott. You will have a chance there to explain your actions, if you can, to a federal judge. I just came in here to watch the trial. You can't do this to me. I already have, Mr. Ringo. This court is adjourned. Well, he cleaned up the country, the old Wild West country. He made law and order prevail. And none can deny it, the legend of Wyatt forever will live on the trail. Oh, Wyatt Earp! Quiet Earp, brave, courageous, and bold. Long live his fame, and long live his glory, and long may his story be told. Long may his story be Mình vừa tô xong bức tranh Conan Cảm ơn mọi người đã theo dõi video hướng dẫn tô màu của mình Và đừng quên ấn like video, subscribe kênh để ủng hộ cho mình
ra nhiều video hơn nữa nhé Xin chào